you should be able to respond just by clicking that the response. All right. Let's take a look at your responses. Yep. Show chart. Okay. I'm glad to see that you are and the level B, which is just a basic. Um, today we are going to learn about how to make a Google slide. I'm going to walk you through that and show my screen so you can also follow along on your computer. Okay, are you able to see my screen? All right, we are going to go over to your drive. If you don't know how to get to it, you could type in drive.google.com or just drive, type in Google Drive. Once you're there, I'm walking you through it to see, show you how to do it. So as you are there, you're going to click on New. We're going to create a Google Slides. Google Slides is what Microsoft Office would call Google, um, PowerPoint. By clicking on Google Slides, it opens up a blank screen for us. This is your title page, just like it would be in Microsoft Office with their title page. At this point in time, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change the name of my presentation to Practice Slide Presentation. All I did to change the name is I clicked on it. When that gray box comes around, it's allowing me to rename it. Okay, so we're going to give it the name How to Create a Slide Presentation. And of course, you should always have your name somehow or the, the group's names if you're doing this as a group. Now, I don't know about you, but a white background is kind of boring. Is that correct? Okay. How you could change the background is really simple. You come over here to themes. Okay. If you click on the theme, it gives you the choices you can have. Now, there are some really cool looking choices and some that gets very busy. You need to be careful about the choices you make. And they are always updating these choices. It also gives you an option of importing a theme if you have one pre-made up. So, for this one, let's use the color strip. Now it is also really important to know how you're going to use your presentation. This layout is a good layout for presenting where the person is looking directly at their computer. But only if you have people who do not get distracted easily because these multiple colors could be a problem. Whereas if I chose another theme, maybe a simple dark option, it's clean, no other distractions, but again, you've got to be aware of the size of your font and the colors that is presented off of it. Let's go ahead and stay, go to a neutral looking one, which usually a grayscale is neutral to continue on with our slides. The 
The background is not too bright. The words are nice and clean looking and it's not too busy. Okay, so I went through the themes and why to choose different themes and what to avoid. Let's now cr continue to create our slides. We're going to add a new slide over here. There's this little plus sign right on the left hand side of your screen under the word file. Click the plus. It opens up a title box and a spot for information. Let's say I didn't want to do that layout. There's that black arrow that's right next to the plus sign. If you click on it, it gives you a choice of what layouts you would like to use. If I'm going to import a picture onto it, I would probably want a blank layout. If I want a picture with a sub a captioning underneath it, it gives you the layout for that. It also gives you a layout for just a title only or two columns prepared already. Okay, so first thing I'm going to teach you is um, how to choose the right layout. Okay, I already had you step one was using drop down menu next to the plus. Okay, there's also a way of doing it by two hitting the slide bar but slide to get the drop down menu there and you can apply a layout. It gives you the choices there. Okay, so clicking on slide then you have apply layout. So you had two choices on how to add the right layout to the slide. Now let's say you want to add pictures. And yes, I'm building this at, at the same time of teaching you because I want you to see how easy it is to build a, a PowerPoint. Okay, I want to add a picture. It's really simple. There's this icon here called image. Okay, so one would be click on the image icon. So we're going to click on the image icon and it gives us multiple options here. Upload, take a snapshot by URL, your albums, and this would be your Google albums, your Google Drive, and then of course search. Let's search for an image. Okay. Let's do um, cats. Maybe I'm doing a presentation about cats. And let's say I like that image there. Two things this does for us. One, it tells me exactly where did they find this image from. Okay. And two, it allows you to select it and then go on. Okay. I clicked OK and boom. Now I can see you. To resize a picture, always go in the corners and drag it down. Always 
use the corner to drag it down. You click and you hold and you drag. Do not go in the center of the top or the sides. If you do, your cat starts looking funny. Oh, but if I make a mistake, what's that keystroke again to undo? Control Z. Correct? Or Command Z for Max. Yes, it does. So, to click on the image, you click on the image icon. That was one choice. Well, you could also insert an image. So the second option to do a picture was what? Do I t click on the word what? What? How do I insert an image by not clicking on the image icon but the drop down menu at the top? Which of the words did I describe to insert an image. Okay. Right, we have to get to that menu. But if you go up here to the words, your menu here, you can insert a picture by going to insert. Oh. Are you on an iPad? Okay, on the my computer. Alrighty, so you're going to click on the word insert. That brings a drop down box menu for you to choose what are you going to insert. Most of the time you're going to use this word insert until you learn the shortcut keys of the icons. For example, if you want to add a text box, a link, videos, the creative word art, this is where you're going to find all those basic steps. Okay, so click on the word insert, then choose image. Okay, so there are two ways of adding a picture. As you notice, the word picture is never shown. They're all called images. Correct. Okay, reviewing. I showed you how to change your themes. I've shown you how to choose a layout that is appropriate for what you want. And I've shown you how to add pictures or images, resize them by taking what part of the picture? The corners, very good, to make them larger or smaller. And I've shown you the two ways from there. Outside of that, is there anything else you would like to learn that to help you prepare your presentation for the first time. Yes, I am. Yes. to allow for transitions of of Okay, I'm having a hard time understanding you. Is your microphone in a clear location? There is a lot better. Thank you very much. I believe you were talking about transitions Yes. 
Yes, it does. In fact, one of the nice things is the present button over here. You can present with um, just like you're saying, click on it and it goes from slide to slide. Okay, and then exit to stop. But you also can share this and manually present it. There's a way, it's called publishing to the web. Okay, if you go down from file, publish to the web, in here it gives you a chance of auto advance the slides and it gives you some options and it will have you start the play the slideshow if you would like it to start it as soon as the player loads and if you want to continue over and over again you restart the show. It, does that answer the question that you're looking for? All right. Any other questions? So publish slides to auto advance. Okay. The other one was I believe transitions you were thinking about where you can apply to all slides and you still can apply to all slides from this moment like in Microsoft present. All right. Any other questions on how to create a simple slide presentation? Thank you.